Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, I'm going to explain monotone convergence theorem. Not only that, I'm also going to prove monotone convergence theorem. So what's monotone convergence theorem? Well, if you have a monotone sequence, the sequence is going to be convergent if and only if it's bounded. Okay, so there are several important things here. So in this theorem, you're only working with monotone sequences. That means either your sequence is monotonically increasing or your sequence is monotonically decreasing. Now, if you have such a sequence, if your sequence is convergent, then it's going to be bounded. And other way works too. If your sequence is bounded, then it's going to be convergent as well. Alright, so before we prove this theorem, let's try to understand the intuitive idea behind this theorem. Alright, so let's talk about the first direction. Let's say you have a monotone sequence and let's say it's convergent. Now, let me take a monotonically increasing sequence. So you have a monotonically increasing sequence, but you also know that it's going to be convergent. Now, if, it, if the sequence is convergent, that means the limit exists as a finite number, right? So what's going to happen is that this limit of the sequence is going to bound the sequence from above. In fact, here's a cool fact. The limit is going to be the supremum of that monotonically increasing sequence. So the sequence is bounded from above. Now how, how about bounded from below? Well, since this is an increasing sequence, you can say the first term of the sequence is going to be the smallest term. So actually it will, that term will bound the sequence from below, right? So now you can see if you have a monotonically increasing sequence, if it is convergent, it's going to be bounded from above and bounded from below. So it's going to be bounded overall. All right. Now, how about if you have a decreasing sequence? Well, you can do you can do the same argument. So, if you have a monotonically decreasing sequence, and if it is convergent, the limit of the sequence you can find it in the bottom, right? If you have a decreasing sequence, you can find the limit on the bottom. So, your sequence will be bounded below from the limit of the decreasing sequence. And so that means the sequence is bounded below. Now, how about bounded above? Well, since this is a decreasing sequence, the largest term of the sequence, you can find it in the very first term. So it's going to be bounded above, right, from that very first term. So you can see if you have a monotonically increasing or decreasing convergent sequence, it's going to be bounded for sure. Now, let's talk about the other direction. So let's say you have a bounded sequence. What does it mean? Well, a sequence is bounded means it's bounded from above, bounded from below. So it's bounded from above, bounded from below. That means your sequence is going to be trapped between these two bounds. Now, let's say you have an increase in sequence trapped between these two. So if you have an increase in sequence trapped between these two bounds, it cannot exceed the upper bound, right? This upper bound will prevent the sequence going above the upper bound, okay? So this upper bound kind of uh, behave like a horizontal asymptote. Now sequence, you can think it as a function. Now you might have learned about horizontal asymptotes in your calculus classes, right? So this upper bound will act like a horizontal asymptote and the sequence will approach towards the smallest upper bound, towards the supremum of the sequence. And that supremum will be the limit of the sequence, so the sequence will be convergent. Now, how about if you have a decrease in sequence? Well, if you have a decrease in sequence, okay, this lower bound will prevent this decrease in sequence from going below the lower bound. And the greatest of these lower bounds will be actually the limit of the sequence and it's finite okay these bounds are finite by the way okay bounded means they exist as a finite number so the limit exists it's finite the sequence is going to be convergent so that's the intuitive idea now there's another thing in this theorem we only use monotone sequences now how about oscillating sequences well, oscillating sequences doesn't work well with this idea where even though some oscillating sequences are bounded, mm, 
not always they are going to be convergent okay so for example if you take the sequence negative 1 to the n that means terms of the sequence are going to be 1 negative 1 1 negative 1 so and so now clearly this is bounded right this sequence is bounded um, let's say 2 is an upper bound 2 is definitely an upper bound negative 2 is a lower bound so the terms of the sequence all the terms are trapped between 2 and negative 2 but the sequence is divergent right the limit does not exist okay so um, that's uh, that's the problem with oscillating sequences but don't get me don't get me wrong like there are some oscillating sequences that they are bounded but and still convergent so for example um, negative 1 to the n over n this is another oscillating sequence it's bounded but it is convergent too the limit of the sequence is going to be zero so um, the problem with this theorem is that the reason that we cannot use oscillating sequences is that if you have a monotone sequence if it is convergent then guaranteed it's going to be bounded if your monotone sequence is bounded guaranteed it's going to be convergent but if your oscillating sequence is bounded you cannot guarantee the convergence uh, in an oscillating sequence even though it's bounded okay so that's why this is called the monotone convergence theorem or that's why we use monotone sequences to um, uh, in this theorem okay all right so let's go ahead and prove this theorem all right then it's time to prove this theorem so let's prove this theorem in the forward direction first you have a monotone sequence and you know it's convergent you want to show that it's bounded now here's the thing i have done this exact proof in a different video slowly okay if you click on this link uh, you can go uh, you can go to that video and watch that proof okay but doesn't mean that i'm not going to do this proof in this video i'm going to do it but a little bit fast okay all right so what are the things you know you know you have a monotone sequence and you know it's convergent now a sequence is convergent then you know limit exists right so limit of let's say the limit of the sequence s sub n is actually l l is a finite number so this uh, this is the information that we know okay this is something that we are going to use in our proof now what do we want to prove so we must show we must show that absolute value of any term of the sequence for all the n okay is going to be less than or equal to capital M. This is the definition for bounded sequence. Okay, this is what we want to prove, and this is what we are going to use to prove that. All right. So since the sequence is uh, convergent, and since the limit exists, let's use the definition of the limit. So do you remember the definition of the limit? Okay. So for any epsilon or for all. For all epsilon, for all epsilon greater than zero, there exist capital N such that for all the terms, for all the terms comes after this capital Nth position, this inequality holds. Okay? Now this is the definition of the limit. Right. Now you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to choose my epsilon to be 1 because this is for all epsilon greater than 0. So let's choose epsilon to be 1. So let's delete this part and let me say let epsilon be 1. Then of course this all stuff holds so I just have to replace this epsilon by 1. Great. Now at this point I'm going to draw a picture because picture will really help us to understand what's going on in this proof. Okay, I'm going to choose a decreasing sequence. So let's draw a decreasing sequence. Okay, now what's the meaning of this definition in terms of picture? So take, a, take the capital nth position of this sequence. So let's say this is the capital nth term of this sequence. So this definition tells you for all the terms, so for all n comes after this capital nth position, that means for these terms of the sequence, this inequality holds. That's what it means. Okay? Alright. Now, here we are only talking about the tail of the sequence. Okay? The terms comes after the capital nth position. Alright. Now, let's use some tricks here. 
So let's think about this inequality. I am going to use triangle inequality here. Okay. All right. So let's see what we can do. I'm going to take this sequence. So uh, not sequence. Uh, inequality. This is what we have. Now from the triangle inequality, I know that this part is going to be greater than absolute value of Sn minus absolute value of L. L. This is from triangle inequality. Now, of course, this is less than 1, okay, from this inequality. So, we can say absolute value of Sn minus absolute value of L is strictly less than 1. So, this is a result from triangle inequality. Okay, now I'm going to move this absolute value of L to the right. So, absolute value of Sn is going to be strictly less than absolute value of L plus 1. Okay, great. Now, don't celebrate because this is not the end. Now, if one might think, boom, we got our capital M, we prove that our sequence is bounded, this fits with the definition. Is it? Not really. Because this N here and this N here, there's a difference. Here, in the definition, this definition should hold for all N, for every N, for all the terms of the sequence. But here, this inequality holds only for the terms that comes after capital nth position only for the tail of the sequence okay only for this part so you are leaving behind this part of the sequence okay all right so let's discuss now you have this uh, terms of the sequence that comes before the capital nth position now really there's only finitely many terms right there's only capital n number of terms of the sequence right that comes before capital nth position. Now think about this. If you have 100 terms, 100 numbers, can you bound them? Of course, yes. Take the maximum of them. That will be an upper bound, right? If you have 200 terms, take the maximum. That will be an upper bound. So this finitely many number of terms, okay? In those finitely many number of terms, if I can find the maximum, that will be an upper bound for this part. Okay, now here's the thing, we know an upper bound for this part, we know an upper bound for this part, let's discuss uh, about this. Okay, so let me find space, my space management is uh, not very good as you can see. Alright, so, um, okay, so I'm going to use this space here. So I'm going to take the maximum, I'm going to define capital M sub 1 to be the maximum of the first few terms of this sequence, first capital N terms of this sequence. Well, actually absolute. So S1, absolute of S1, absolute of S2, and so and so on, until absolute of the capital Nth term. Okay? Alright? So I'm going to take the maximum of all these terms, and I define it to be capital M1. Now I can say, now I'm going to define my capital M to be, okay, maximum of either capital M1 or absolute value of L plus 1. So take the maximum of those two. Okay, so what did I do here? I took the maximum, an upper bound for this part. I took an upper bound for this part. Take the maximum of those upper bounds. That maximum number, capital M, will bound all the terms of the sequence. Okay, and that will be your capital M. Okay, so then now we can say if we choose our m in this way, absolute value of Sn is less than or equal to capital N for all n. Now we are talking about every term of this equals because we include this part and we include this part. And that's the proof. That's the proof for the forward direction. Let's do this proof for the other direction. Alright, so let's prove this theorem in the other direction. That means you have a monotone sequence and it's bounded, you want to show that it's convergent, okay? So what are the information we know? We know that you have a monotone sequence and it's bounded, okay? Now you want to show that it's convergent. That means if we can show that the limit of the sequence exists, then we can say that the sequence is convergent. But you have to use the fact that you have a monotone sequence and it's bounded, okay? So let's take an increase in sequence, okay? For example, now you have to do this for decrease in sequence as well, but the process is similar. Now I'm going to choose an increase in sequence and I'm going to say it's as a sub n. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a set out of this sequence, okay? Using the sequence, I'm going to convert the sequence into a set, okay? So n belongs to natural number system. Now, since the sequence is bounded, we know the supremum exists as a finite number. So let's call capital A or let's call capital L to be the supremum of S, supremum of the sequence actually, okay? Right. Now, what do we know? We know since this is the supremum and we know we have an increase in sequence. Let's draw a picture. We have an increase in sequence, okay? And we know the supremum and its capital L. Now, here's the thing. Supremum means the lowest upper bound, okay? Now, if you subtract a number from this lower upper bound, lowest upper bound, um, it's not going to be an upper bound anymore. So that means let's take, let epsilon be a positive number, any positive number, and consider L minus epsilon. So L minus epsilon will be like here, okay? And L minus epsilon now will not be an upper bound because L is the smallest upper bound, okay? So that means you can find a term of the sequence a term of this of this sequence s sub capital n such that the s sub capital n actually is greater than l minus epsilon because l minus epsilon is not an upper bound so if it is not an upper bound you can find a term of the sequence which is greater than this guy right okay now think about the terms that comes after capital nth position so for all terms that comes after capital nth position, since this is an increase in sequence, okay, so let's draw this. This is the capital nth position. So all these terms, S sub n's that comes after nth position, they are less than, they are greater than or equal to S sub n, right? The capital nth term of the sequence, since this is an increase in sequence, okay? So it's, it's a simple fact. Right, now we know, S sub n is greater than L minus epsilon. Okay, now let's try to edit this inequality furthermore. We know capital L is about all of them. Capital L is in fact about, about S sub n as well, right? Because it's the supremum. It's the lowest upper bound. So it has to be larger than or equal to every term of the sequence. Okay, now... L, L is definitely smaller than L plus epsilon for a positive epsilon number, right? If you add a positive number, so this, this is a true fact, okay? Right, now at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop these two. I'm going I'm, I'm to filter out something from this inequality. Think this, S sub N is then definitely going to be less than L plus epsilon but greater than L minus epsilon. Right? That's something we can filter out from this inequality. It's, just, it's like a summary of the inequality, brief summary of the inequality. Right? But this is for all n that comes after capital N. Right? Because, see, we define this n to be the terms that comes after this capital nth position. Now, wait a minute. We know this, right? So, we, from here, this inequality, we can say absolute value of Sn minus n is strictly less than epsilon for all n greater than capital N. This is the definition of the limit. So that means, oops, I forgot that absolute value mark. So this means the limit of the sequence S sub n is capital N. The limit exists. L is finite. Supremum is finite because the sequence is bounded. And the supremum of the sequence is, in fact, the limit of the sequence. So the sequence is convergent. So what we proved right now, if you have a monotonically increasing sequence, if it is bounded, using its supremum, we show that its supremum is, in fact, the limit. So the sequence is convergent. Now you have to do the same for monotonically decreasing sequence. But the process is same. I will leave it to you as an exercise, okay? So, um, if you have monotonically decrease in sequence, take the infimum and that infimum of the sequence is going to be the limit of that monotonically decrease in sequence. Hence, 
the sequence is converted. All right, so this is the proof of the monotone convergence theorem. And thank you very much for watching this video.